On August 2018, Doge Shopping App sent a dozen of social media influencers with millions of followings to a trip in Fiji. Now, what they basically said is if you promote our app and our company, we'll send you to an island far away and you weren't getting paid. In exchange, you were getting the value of the trip. Everywhere on social media, people were talking about the dote trip. I think everybody and the dog wanted to be a dote girl, go to Fiji, and have fun. It's kind of like when you were in high school and you didn't get invited to those high school parties. Yeah, the fear of missing out is painful and it's a lot more costly than the worth of your influence. So what do I mean by that? These girls who went on the trip could easily buy a ticket to Fiji by themselves and get paid, but instead they were fighting for a spot and almost undervaluing their brand so they could go on a trip. I just find this so fascinating. You know, how could we do something or be brainwashed to undervalue our worth? This is an example of the bandwagon effect. Everybody is doing it. So why shouldn't I? I would say I definitely regret being naive enough to think that they would actually want to take me on a trip as the app grew. I think they got kind of cocky and asked like way more of other influencers just to use and manipulate them for free marketing. Hey guys, if you're new to my channel, my name is Jade. I'm a digital marketer and I run a few businesses about social media. So in my experience, I've learned that it's super, super important to be aware of how people could be controlling you. I just don't think people are seeing the situation from a bird's eye view. And so often you could be a victim of being brainwashed by these companies. So today's video is a topic about bandwagoning effect. And by definition, the bandwagoning effect is just doing something in condition because everybody else is too. The bandwagon effect is actually in a series of something called a logic fallacy. And if you want to know more, I'll make a whole other video about other versions of this. Basically the media and any propaganda newspaper uses these fallacies to trick your mind. And all marketers are really, really good at doing this. So if you ever want to um, persuade people, I will make a whole other video about the other fallacies. Today we're going to just focus on the bandwagon effect. Sounds good? Okay. An example of the bandwagoning effect is these three ideas. The first one is being brands making you promote something just because everyone else is doing it. And brands typically do this by emailing influencers that, hey, will you promote this product because we're featured in Vogue. Everyone's promoting it, so you should too. And I'll literally put up screenshots of companies that email me and it looks like this. Hi. So I know it's very subtle, but in a weird way, you know, you're kind of undervaluing yourself when you take on these projects multiple times. And later on in this video, I'll explain how much companies are able to actually scam influencers and you won't even realize it. Another example of the bandwagon effect in a negative way is actually trends. A lot of people find a video popular. Like for example, do you guys remember when everyone was ordering whatever the person in front of them ordered? I don't know what that is, it's just, it's, it's a whole thing. You guys can search it up. And I remember one person made it, then two, then five, now the whole world. And sooner or later, I actually hopped on the train as well and I made my own version of it. And again, this is not necessarily a bad thing, but again, when you're chasing a trend or chasing anything to be fit in or validated, you can lose yourself. You can just start chasing things, never speaking up for yourself. Now, of course, the last example I really have, I see in this influencer landscape, is the Dote shopping app trips. I actually have my friend Emma Top here, and I'm gonna ask her some questions about what it's like to be a Dote girl. Is it actually that fun, or am I onto something in regards to Dote being a scam? Let's find out. Hey, Emma. <laughs> Um, when I was asked on my trip, I was told that I had to hit 15k followers on the Dote app itself in order to qualify for the trip. But I know for a fact that Basic Creator, it did change. And as the app grew, I think they got kind of cocky. Um, and so I had to ask like way more of other influencers just to use and manipulate them for free marketing. Like it could be a hundred thousand followers minimum to go on the trips, right? Oh yeah, if not more. Really? Yeah. That's okay, so you heard it from Emma herself. I may be giving Dote some bad light, but let's just do some quick math. Say you have to bring 10,000 followers as an influencer and you want to work with the company Dote, which is like a shopping app, right? And say maybe each of these 10,000 people you bring over the span of a year, they buy $100 worth of products. Buy a hat, they buy some makeup palettes. It's equivalent to 100 bucks. Now, this is something called an LTV or a lifetime value. I work with a lot of clients in e-commerce, so LTV is a term we use to really justify the value of one customer, which is just say in this case, $100 over a year. Now, 
let's just say the trip itself to take you cost two thousand dollars up front for dote so the flight the living expense everything like that if you guys want to see a video on budget traveling i'll link my video below but from my experience it's around two grand per person for like a week or something now say you bring ten thousand followers on their account which is ten thousand potential customers ten thousand times a hundred dollars over a year is over one million dollars in revenue these influencers are at a minimum bringing in a million dollars minimum because of the bandwagoning effect we're blinded or brainwashed to be like oh my god this is it when really we could be really justifying at least more money or more value because at the end of the day this is a business and if dotes like targeting young young girls who just maybe don't know how to negotiate i feel like it's not right and i do know and well aware that a lot of it is networking and the value is in the community you build but just to keep that perspective don't forget that i definitely am glad that i did go on the trip okay. but in terms of like leading up the trip i look into like i mean is it really worth it for what you're giving the brand and is like is the good like relationship with the brand and are they like really looking up you and want to work together or are they just trying to take advantage of you and your free marketing you know now before this video ends i want to leave off with the conclusion which is the pros and cons of the bandwagoning effect because for some people it's actually very useful so if you're an influencer or a content creator make sure you stay to the very end to learn the pros and cons also if you're here right now make sure you give this video a like if you're so far enjoying it because everyone else is giving a like so should you get it the, the bandwagoning effect is in in action. <laughs> I would really appreciate it if you like this video. It really helps me out and lets me know that you like this video and if you want more. Okay, so for the pros of the bandwagoning effect, I think it's a great tool to get awareness. You know, trends and being relevant is all about, unfortunately, hopping in what everyone thinks is cool and right to validate it. So if you're looking for fast growth, hopping on a video trend or going on a trip with Dote or doing all these things is actually a good thing. Now, a con. What I've seen a lot is because you're doing fast growth, it could lead to fast decline. I've seen it so many times where people crash and burn because when you get so much attention at once, it's hard to sustain. People drop off, people get bored, and I find that incremental growth is the best. But if you happen to land in a place where you just blow up virally, you might lose a lot of people and you might not be able to stay sustain it. Take me for example, like one of my videos actually hit like a million views in like three months and I didn't know what the fuck to do because I would, did not expect it. I run businesses as my main source of income, but like I could imagine for someone who has like this, like 100% as their full income, YouTube, like it would be very overwhelming and suddenly like you got a million views and the next month you don't get any views and like that's your only source of money. I just find that a big con is the unsustainable fact when you're hopping on trends. Because you're reliant on the market, you are basically taking a huge risk. Okay, so this pro of the bandwagon effect is pretty obvious as well. It's going to be the networking opportunities. When you hang around people who are on trend, you're also gonna segment their audience. And I think that's where the dope trip really worked. These girls that went on the trip are smart. It's not that they want to make money, if they want to leverage the network. They want to collaborate with people that also have that audience to even elevate their own. And when you kind of constantly drive traffic to each other or essentially just, you know, give each other your clout, you actually make more money at the end of the day. So I know it's a huge networking opportunity because you can see that they grew even more with these trips. So keep that in mind. I don't regret going on the trip at all. I, like I personally, like, I love my trip. I met everyone that I, I met on it was like super cool and like we're friends now to this day. Um, I would say I definitely regret being naive enough to think that they would actually want to take me on a trip um, initially and, and how I campaigned for months and thought that I was going to get like that reciprocated back to me um, and like kind of holding on to like the loose promises they gave me instead of kind of waking up being like, come on, like they're just using you, you know? Now, for the last con, I have to say, is you could be chasing an idea. You could be chasing cloud or networking opportunities, whatever you want to call it. But at the end of the day, you're still devaluing your own worth. If you have to consistently change or you know do something for the validation of the market, who the fuck are you? You know, are you just gonna be left with a skeleton of nothingness and emptiness? Because trust me, guys, I've on this channel specifically chased like the fucking trendiest videos and I just felt so shitty after. And there's nothing wrong with that if your intention is to make money, but if your intention is to genuinely impact people and add value, I think the bandwagoning effect is one of the most 
under like under analyze things because you don't think about it it's it's gonna be subliminal you're gonna start acting on it like autopilot effect on my channel am i taking steps that are to validate my work to other people i think a lot of us will be stuck in a place where we just don't know who we are in conclusion the bandwagoning effect is not a bad thing it's only bad if you're not aware about it i honestly if you're an influencer leverage it the f like honestly leverage it till you can you know get your coin set but just don't forget who you are don't forget that at the end of the day chasing a trend will not be sustainable because when you're constantly trying to change yourself you lose yourself guys so i hope you enjoyed that in-depth analysis about the bandwagon effect this is kind of a series i want to start about like the psychology of influencers i love digital marketing i love psychology and why not put it all together so this is actually just going to be like part one of this series i'll be doing more of these logical fallacies there's a ton there's literally i think about over 20. the next one's going to be actually about how to use emotion to manipulate your following so yeah if you guys want to see that let me know in the comments below if you want to see that video shout out to the comment winner shout out to the comment winner comment on this post to be featured in the next episode if you want to be the next comment winner, comment below if you are a victim of the bandwagoning effect. Please, please, please comment below and let me know because I want to talk to you, hug you, and let you know that I love you so, so much. I'll catch you guys in the next one and I'll see you very soon. Make sure you guys watch The Startup, which is running next Friday. The Startup is my own YouTube series that I've made and if you at all enjoyed my videos, I would love to see you there. Um, it's my little reality TV show. So you can learn more about my life. I'll see you there. I'll see you guys soon. Love you so much and peace.